In a recent interview with Submission Radio, Colby Covington claimed that if he defeats Kamaru Usman at UFC 268, he wants his next fight to be against Dustin Poirier. The only fight to make is me and Dustin, the soy boy Sawyer. It's the only fight to make. I'm going to expose him. He said it was on site. I thought it was on site. Why is he quiet now? Because he knows I'm coming for him and he knows he's not a man of his word. He talked all this shit to the media that, oh, it's on site when I see Kobe. I've seen him 50 times since then and he walked right away. He put his eye down and walked right past me like the good little bitch that he is. Shortly after Covington's comments began to make the rounds, Poirier's teammate Jorge Masvidal fired back at Kobe with the following message. For those that don't know because I've been there and done that with both of them, Kobe will call the cops because history always repeats itself. Hashtag super necessary. After repeatedly making tasteless and crass remarks towards Dustin Poirier's wife and threatening to kill him and his family after UFC 264's loss, McGregor recently decided to go after Khabib Nurmagomedov's dead father. On Tuesday, the Irishman suddenly decided to reply to Khabib's comment from over two weeks ago with the following tweet. Speaking on the DC and RC show, Daniel Cormier shared his thoughts on the recent comments made by McGregor about Khabib's father and discussed whether the Irishman has crossed the line again. Here's what he said. From him talking about Dustin's wife to now Habib's father, he is just taking it way too far. And when you're when when you're dealing with death and COVID and all these other things that we've dealt with over the last year and a half, that's all off limits. I mean, we talked about wives and families mm-hmm. being off limits, but when you're talking about a man's uh, everything, right? Habib's dad was his everything, and you're talking about him being gone today due to something that has been so terrible for our entire world and you use that in a sense to get back and and you know what's probably most disturbing rc is that this wasn't done the day after the fight or the same night of the fight exactly this was done weeks after the fight so it feels like it was thought Mm -hmm. of and it was thought through for connor to tweet something like that now i get shock value and i get trying to get people to talk but way too far to the point that I immediately call Habib last night and said, Hey, are you okay? Right. Asking him if he's right. okay after having to see that, especially with no ability to do anything about it again. I think when stuff like that is being said, I think it's a cry for help, right? Connor has all the money in the world. Mm. He has all the fame, but now when you start to dig at that level, it's like somebody needs to get to McGregor and help him. Right, start to kind of reshift his mind and his focus and get him back to a a better place. And um, it's unfortunate. Speaking on the recent episode of Believe You Me podcast, Michael Bisping reacted to the Usman vs. Covington 2 booking and explained why he believes Kobe does not deserve another title shot. Here's the clip. Uh, Covington versus Usman, great. Do you know what? They've been talking about that fight for a long time, and I'm glad that it's going to go down. It'll be a really good fight, but I'm glad that it's going to happen. I mean, November seems like a long way away, but it's not. Jesus Christ, I can't believe we're almost in August. It's absolutely insane. Where is this year going? But then the reason I'm happy, I mean, of course, it's a great fight. Does, does 
Covington necessarily deserve it? Maybe not. Probably not. But whatever. The first fight was fantastic. It was a really good fight. Uh, and we know the next one's going to be good. But then after that, once it's done, then the division can start to get cleared up. And the reason I'm saying that is because Leon Edwards, Leon Edwards needs to get a title shot. Gilbert Burns is calling him out. There's there's a lot of there's a lot of I don't know. I mean, Kamara's been very active. You can't you can't. It's not Usman's fault. He's fighting every few months by the looks of things. He's keeping a very very hectic schedule. He's knocking people out. He just knocked out Masvidal. He's going to fight Kamara. Uh, sorry, Covington again. But there's a lot of good fights at welterweight for him as well. Uh, I'm looking at the rankings here. I mean, realistically, Covington's number two. Are oh, they going to fight? Gilbert Burns is calling out Leon Edwards. They've got to do that in the co-main event. The co-main event of that fight, they'll miss a trick. Obviously, the UFC have done very well without my input. But the perfect co-main event on that fight night would be Gilbert Burns to take a Leon Edwards. And whoever wins that fight gets to fight Colby or, or Kamaru or whoever wins, probably Kamaru. Again, that's the perfect way to do it, but then I'm just hearing. Speaking on SiriusXM Fight Nation 156, Aljamain Sterling previewed his rematch with Piotr Jan at UFC 267 and explained why he feels so confident that he can defeat Jan again, this time with no controversy. Here's the clip. I had to go out there and dominate Peter Young the way I said I was going to dominate him. And uh, I truly do believe the second time we, we do this, I'm going to do that. I really do think this guy is training like a madman right now because he felt something in there. Even with me being compromised, he felt something in there that I was a different type of level in terms of my athletic ability and my skill. And I think when mm -hmm. you see something like that, you have to go back, make the corrections and and do the work and that's what PD Jan is doing I think he's an intelligent fighter I think it's going to be a completely different fight but I do really really think on my best day that guy does not touch me at least right now the way I felt is like if I felt good that guy does not touch me if I showed up the way I did against Pedro Munoz that guy does not touch me if I show up the way I did against Corey Sanhagen and all these other guys that guy does not touch me like I don't do MMA math but Skills are skills. I know what I felt when I was in there. He knows what he felt in, when we were in there. And uh, I know I got to go out there and prove the doubt is wrong and do it the way I said I, I wanted to do it, the way I envisioned it. And I think that would finally remove all doubt. That would be the fourth top five guy that I've beaten. And for him, it would be zero. You know, so mm -hmm. um, stats are the stats, facts are the facts. Like people can say whatever the hell they want to say. I earned my right to fight for a belt. He did not. The fight when Corey Sanhagen and I should have been the title fight. We were the higher ranked fights. I think we were two and four. And this guy's fighting number six. Like, how does that even make any sense whatsoever? Like, I don't know. Former UFC middleweight champion Luke Rockhold has expressed his intention to return to the octagon soon. The 36-year-old hasn't entered the cage since a brutal knockout loss to current light heavyweight king Jan Blahovic back in 2019. On Thursday, Rockhold shared new sparring footage as he prepares for his long-anticipated return to the UFC. Here's the video. Yeah. 